Hello everyone. Today I am going to go into great detail on the chatterbait. All right. So, I'm always getting asked questions on the chatterbait. And for good reason. I mean, I've fished them for 10 years, pretty much. And you guys see on my channel, it's my confidence bait, my confidence moving bait, anyway. And I uh, catch a lot of fish on them, catch a lot of big fish on them. Um, and this year, it's been a lot of it. Um, it's been pretty difficult all year, so falling back on a confidence bait. So, so tons of questions on them so I figured I would do a complete complete deal on it I'm gonna start with the chatterbaits that I use um, how to rig them all that stuff um, and then we're gonna go line rod reel and then we'll get into the nitty-gritty about how I fish them and some weird tips and tricks to get you more fish and bigger fish on them for all you guys that you know that are constantly, oh, I never catch them on chatterbait and stuff. You're gonna wanna watch this whole video. And even you guys that love the chatterbait and stuff, still watch the whole video. Here we go. Number one, types of chatterbaits. I use three different kinds, pretty much. And I actually don't have one of the first kind with me, but it's an original chatterbait. Alright? Nothing spectacular there, right? You find those at any store, just the original. The only thing I do not like about the original is the skirt it's that stupid molded plastic skirt it's really thin I don't like it very much but that's what I used for years like eight years whatever up until two years ago I guess that's pretty much the only chatterbait I used so and that thing will catch you fish I do not paint the blade I keep it just a nickel blade seriously on the originals they all come like nickel blade um, I do not paint them I don't paint any of my blades. I keep them whatever they come with. That's what I keep. All right. So, the original, and then another one is, and this is actually now my favorite one. I don't have an original with me because I pretty much stopped using them now. Uh, not really. I I did have one left in the box, and I was using it last week and got it hung up. And yeah, bye bye. Um. I think that's what happened to it. I don't know. But anyway, it's not there anymore. So, but I've been using these a lot more. And this is the Z-Man Chatterbait Customs Tackle Warehouse exclusive one. You just go on to Tackle Warehouse, look up Chatterbait Custom, and they'll pop up. And this is the Height Delight color. Um, we'll get into colors at the end of this. But this is just kind of a offshoot color. I just grabbed this one. But... I do actually use this one and like it, but we'll get into colors later. But the Chatterbait Custom Tackle Warehouse exclusives, I like them a lot. They have a banded skirt on them, just like the new Chatter Chicken, um, the Jackhammer. The head is very similar to the Jackhammer as well. Um, these things chatter like a beast, and they have a good old Gamakatsu hook on them. They're just great. This is an excellent, excellent chatterbait. These have become my favorite now. Um, and let me talk about that, the jackhammer real quick. I do not like the jackhammer. I do not throw the jackhammer. I have tried it. The hookup ratio sucked on them. The head's really not all that great, even though they say they are. Um, they, like, there's really not much different about them, especially to pay $20 for them. Okay, <laughs> like, I'm going to be honest. And... All these Chatterbait Customs on Tiger Warehouse come in the exact same colors, okay? And these are $6, and those are $20. And the originals are like $4 or whatever. So, really, it does not justify the price. So, why the heck am I going to buy that? And I've had terrible hookups with them, and I, they don't chatter anymore. Like, if, you, if you've if you fished a Chatterbait enough, you realize how, really, there's nothing great about them. All right. Trust me. And then the third one, and I barely fished this, these, but 
these are ones that I fish when I want to be fishing sticks because which normally if I'm fishing sticks I'm going to be fishing a number one a jig um, a swim jig or a flipping jig in there or a spinner bait I'm not going to really be fishing a chatter bait but there's some times where I do want to do that and this is the only time I use these these are the chatterbait freedoms now things with these is they have a wobbly head on them and then they have an extra wide gap hook on them so you can rig your swim bait Texas rig style so you don't have an exposed hook and these things can bounce off sticks really well they also bounce off rocks really well see this one's all jacked up but that's really the only time I use these um, but these things do chatter like crazy with that wobbly head on them they really blah, 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 blah. you can feel them like crazy so but that's really the only time I use them I do find that with the hook not exposed sometimes yeah and also I don't like having a full swim bait on there I'll kind of get into that I could go with a smaller one but whatever we'll get into that in a second but um yeah I don't it's a little bit too much before the hook all right but actually these are really awesome around sticks if you really want to fish chatterbait around sticks which can be deadly these are them so that's why I do keep them around I fish pretty much the original or the customs 90% of the time I guess and these probably about 10% of the time so there are the different kinds of chatterbaits now let's go through colors you really only need two colors all right We'll, we'll say three colors, even though it's two and then kind of the other one. All right, green pumpkin, which I fish 80 to 90 percent of the time, probably. Um, and then black and blue for really muddy water, and even sometimes then I still fish a green pumpkin. And then the other one is a white and chartreuse for if you are around shad, but. Most of the time, especially here in Colorado, yes, we have some reservoirs that do have shad in them. And even then, sometimes I'm fishing a green pumpkin because there's also bluegill in them. Most of the time with the chatterbait, I'm imitating bluegill or I'm imitating crawfish. And, yeah, so I'll still be fishing a green pumpkin a lot of times. But white and chartreuse is good when uh, you're imitating the shad eater or the shad for those shad eaters. So those are really the three colors really you can just stick with the two green pumpkin black and blue when it's really dirty and then we'll go to trailers I have three trailers that I fish all the time um, this one is 90 percent of the time I fish this trailer that is the Strike King Rage Swimmer now you can use like a Kitek or any style boot tail swim bait um, now the, here's the difference. This is the 3.75 and this is the 4.75. Now the 3.75 is actually perfect length. Like here you look at this. I won't put it on. But it's pretty much the perfect length. 3.75 is uh, like pretty much the length that you want it. And I bent the crap out of that hook when I bent it back. Bent it back way too much. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's really the perfect length as to where I like to keep them like tail wise but the deal with the 375s is the boot tail is a lot smaller so that's why I actually like using the 475s and turning it into a 375 pretty much let's pinch off that end throw it away I'll use that for my soft plastic when I make another batch it'll be in there um and then just put her on there right now that's about perfect right there I like the bigger boot and gives it more wobble and gives it more action and it's just something I have confidence in that's pretty much how I like to keep them all right you got a little bit past that skirt there so that skirts not messing with your boot action there of that boot tail all right, but I do not like having a full 475 on there. That's way too much length. And actually, this one I even didn't even pinch off quite enough. I still pinch off like a little bit more, not much. But if you have a full one on there, number one is too bulky on top. 
kind of gets the skirt all kind of weird just the way it sits and I don't think they stay on all that great it's just kind of something you'll you'll see but uh also it hangs too low and they're nipping at the tail more than actually getting the full bait so it's a big thing um that like I said I use that as a trailer 90% of the time the other time obviously if you're using a like one day imitate shad use a white color um but the green pumpkin the black and blue i always use green pumpkin trailers so um the other one that i use for if i'm imitating craws or sometimes for imitating bluegill as well just kind of change it up a little bit is a missile baits d-bomb um and i actually just take the legs off boop boop and you just thread that sucker on I don't cut this one um, a lot of times the top will end up getting worn out anyway on these so you actually will end up like pinching them off as long as it doesn't go way up into the skirt you're usually good you still got good action but these things are great for imitating craws um, as well as bluegill and you can actually flip them going the other way I'm not going to take it off and do it but going that way if you're imitating bluegills, you can do it that way as well. So a missile baits D-bomb is the other one that I use, especially for imitating crawfish. Now, in cold water, like right now, the trailer that I use is a tube. This is just a good old zoom salty tube. And you just put that sucker on there. Don't even worry about doing anything to it. And what that does, even though the tube has all these appendages, they're just sitting there barely moving very subtle action as opposed to both of these the missile base deep on these things flap like crazy this thing flaps like crazy this thing is just barely anything there and cold water this thing crushes it and um, that's why if I'm fishing the chatterbait in cold water I got a tube as a trailer alright so those are really the three trailers and it's the same uh, like I said a uh, green pumpkin use a green pumpkin trailer black and blue I usually use a green pumpkin trailer you can use black and blue too I do sometimes as well but most of the time just keep with the green pumpkin trailer and then you're going with the white and chartreuse uh, chatter or whatever use white pretty flip and simple that's the easy part alright there's your chatterbait options there are your trailers there you go that's the easy part that's done now We'll start getting a little bit more difficult, so we'll move from the chatter all the way down to the reel, starting with line. Number one, uh, line I use 17 pound mono filament all the time. All right, mono, mono, mono. That's it. And here's here's why. All right, I I did try fluoro a little bit earlier this year and it just proved my point that I already knew but here is why you want to use monofilament instead of fluorocarbon with chatterbaits spinnerbaits with a chatterbait or a spinnerbait or even shallow running crankbaits I use monofilament even on deep divers I, I, I do use fluorocarbon I'm getting kind of more into the fluorocarbon but on those shallow moving baits and especially the top hook moving baits I want monofilament for sure and here's the reason that sucker's moving right through the water your line's already tight okay it's tight you're reeling your chatterbait in it's coming in more often than not that fish is following and it's hitting it from behind now if that if your line's already tight and you go to pull it's just gonna rip it right out right you have no play there your line's tight fish hits it from behind you're gonna either just blow its mouth open and pull it straight out or you're going to barely skin hook the outside of his mouth which is no fun for anyone and it's a pain and a lot of times you hook that fish but you lose that fish so that's the thing with fluorocarbon it has no stretch you need that stretch of that monofilament that gives you that good hook set because think of it this way right you, the, it's coming for that bait it gets it and then you have your your lines tight like I said and you have that stretch and it's more of a pull which is going to dig that hook in right at that point and you're going to get a lot better hook set um the chances of the hook set are a lot greater so 
monofilament more than fluorocarbon. I always use monofilament on chatterbait. All right. Another thing that helps with that that uh, kind of that stretch of the rod, getting good hooks, that sort of thing, is a good rod. Um, a medium heavy fast action rod is what I use. But there are certain things that I like about them that need to be correct. Okay. And I actually didn't grab the rods that I use, but you guys already know if you know my channel. I use a Spirelite Maverick uh, 7 foot 6 medium heavy fast action. Now I just got that one. I talked about it when I did the review. That thing is phenomenal. And then the other one I use is an Abu Garcia Veritas winch rod and 7 foot 6 medium heavy fast action as well. I just really like 7 foot 6. I used to throw everything up until about a year ago and then I started getting seven foot sixes for like cranking instead of seven ones and seven threes and I love them a lot more but it doesn't matter you can go seven feet to like seven six all right but here's the deal why I like those rods um, is you want the good parabolic bend that's gonna give that bait also to that fish it's the same thing that same kind of you know stretch sort of thing and if and a lot of guys like to say, oh, I use glass rods for a chatterbait, um, crankbait, all that stuff. Crankbaits I, I kind of get, but on the chatterbait, you know, they're like using glass rods because glass rod doesn't want to bounce back really quick. You know, if that, it takes that initial shock, graphite rods will have a tendency to bounce back. But if you have that good parabolic bend rod, it doesn't do it quite as much. But the that's why I like those. But the big reason why I don't like glass rods is because they're really dull. You can't feel everything. Um, a graphite rod, you can feel everything. Um, and that's what I love about it. I want to feel every tick of that chatterbait when I'm chatterbait fishing. I want to feel everything. As soon as it gets stopped, I rip it out, the grass, whatever cover, you know, whatever. And a lot of times, I'm going to say this too, people are always like, uh, chatterbaits get vicious strikes, and that's really actually not true um four out of five fish probably that i catch on chatterbait aren't vicious strikes um and the one that is like the big thump is usually the worst fish um is usually the smaller fish big fish and i say this all the time and this is on every bait usually don't hit very hard um or they don't hit like they don't feel like that thump in your rod and I say this all the time it's it's like it just pulls and it, or your lure just stops now that's obviously there's exceptions to the rule but I, I find that to be a lot of times it's just a stop and you need that sensitive rod to kind of tell the difference if it's that or if it's a some, some piece of cover or something you're going into and you, that's something you'll just figure out when you fish it enough and that's a big component but that is the reason why I like the graphite rods. They're just more sensitive. You can feel every tick. I can feel when I'm hitting everything. I want to like visualize exactly what that chatterbait is doing. I'm feeling everything that it's hitting and knowing exactly what it's doing. Um, and that's the same with most baits, but especially that chatterbait. Um, so that's why I stick with the graphite rods. Just make sure it has a good parabolic bend into it. I'll put the link to the rods and reels and everything I use in the description. So you can check them out. I'm not saying you need to go and buy those, but that's just something for you to check out. But, um, yeah, that spiral wrapped rod, man. Whew. Those are awesome. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not saying you got to go buy those or anything. Um, so that is rod. Now drink. Be real. Is really actually not that important. I'm going to be honest. Um, just stick with a 6 to 1 gear ratio reel. You can even go down to a 5 to 1. You know, the, your spinning reels will be all right. That's fine. Okay. Um, all that stuff. The reel doesn't really matter. Just make sure that sucker casts good. It can handle it. You know, whatever you're doing. All that stuff. That's really nothing. Just common sense. We're going to get into the meat and potatoes about this whole thing. And that's how to fish a chatterbait. You are going to cast that thing out, all right? And this is why, also I should say, this is why when people are like, oh, I don't 
catch them on a chatterbait, but I catch them on a spinnerbait. And I'm like, spinnerbait and chatterbait are not the same thing. Because they aren't. They're two totally different things. Um, our swim jig and a chatterbait. Swim jig and a chatterbait are a little bit closer, but they're still not the same thing. Um, really, a chatterbait is a lipless crankbait. Alright. A rattle trap, a lipless crankbait, or whatever. A red eye shad, you know. That's really how it should be fished. And a lot of you might not know how, even how a lipless crankbait is, should be fished. Which, you know, bo both ways, obviously, there's different ways you can do them. You can just chuck them on one them, whatever. But, most effective way is you cast that chatterbait out, right? Now, you let it sink all the way to the bottom. And here's the deal, too, is what I like to do is if you, when you don't know, obviously you will learn this very quickly, but at first, take that bait in clear water where you can see like two, three feet down, and just put that bait in the water on slack line and watch how fast it falls, alright? Like you say, like a half ounce chatterbait falls like three feet a second, you know? You know that. So, you can figure out your depths where you're at too for you bank fishermen that don't have depth finders and things like that it's a good way to find your depths and I do that with jigs I do that with everything you realize you know especially you know every bait kind of falls different with a different trailer but you figure it out what you have and all that a chatterbait's a great tool for it especially when I always throw half ounce chatterbaits I shouldn't have, I should have mentioned that too always half ounce alright always half ounce <laughs> but anyway you cast that out there, you let it sink to the bottom until your line goes slack. Alright? All the way to the bottom. And then you start reeling. Now, if you start reeling and you don't feel that bait chattering, pop your rod, it'll start chattering. That simple. Alright? And so you want to stay right above the bottom. Right above the bottom, right in the bottom. That's how a chatterbait needs to be fished. Okay? So, out there, let it sink into that grass, and there you go. A lot of times when it falls on the bottom, you can get mud and things like that, grass, and it won't be chattering. So I just pop the rod, you're good to go. Now, a lot of times, and I get a lot of hits like this, a lot of times, they'll hit it like a jig. So that's another thing with knowing your rate of fall. Because a lot of times, too, you won't even notice. It's not like a thump like a jig. Go back to what I was talking about. It's just all of a sudden your line is tight. Or, you know, you cast it out there, it's falling, and you know, okay, this this chatterbait, it falls three feet a second. I'm fishing in ten feet of water. It'll be like three to four seconds, right? It's falling, it's falling, and it's like, that's over four seconds, but your line is still tight. It hasn't gone slack. There's a fish there. Set the hook, dummy. And there's a lot of times you catch a fish like that, I'm being honest. Um, so that's why I'm saying know where, like, like your rate of fall of that lure. That helps so much. <clears throat> and that helps on every lure. Um, that's a big thing in flipping a pigeon, and I, everyone kind of knows that. It's a big thing when you're pitching in a cover to know that. But it works the same throwing a chatterbait and stuff. Um, throwing any bait, really. But... Especially that chatterbait, they have a tendency to hit it when it falls like that. You're on the bottom, now you're just going to be cruising along the bottom. Reel it as slow as you can reel it, where you're still feeling that thing chatter, alright? If you're too slow, it's just going to be rubbing the bottom, obviously you're not going to be feeling it chatter. So you want to reel it as slow as you can get away with, with it still constantly chattering. Now if you're in grass, which you should be in, or whatever, you're gonna that bait's gonna stop chattering or you're gonna start to feel that pressure pop it out that's when you're gonna usually get spanked okay um, you, you are gonna rip that bait out of that grass and it's gonna get hit if there's a fish there that is for sure um, so that is why you want to stay low in that grass you get it in the grass you pop that sucker out boom big mama there alright so um, that is the way that I fish chatterbait 90% of the time, alright? And here's the deal. When I pop it out, pop it out of the grass, alright? I am pretty much doing a hook set at 
not like a full like uh, yank back, but pretty much the same motion. All right, and that's just gonna zip that sucker out of there. Um, the hook sets too. Um, I think a lot of people want to swing it up like to 12 o'clock, like it's a jig. No, when I get a bite or whatever, <laughs> when I get a bite, <laughs> I don't know what whatever means, but. It's not like a big herky jerky jig hook set motion. I'm gonna go to about 10 o'clock, all right? And then you're just gonna tight pull, just like that. Boom, bite, just tight pull. And that is gonna be your hook set on chatterbaits, and I do the same hook set on uh, spinnerbaits and crankbaits. But I think there's kind of a misconception about the chatterbait that you need a freaking rare back like it's a jig hook set and I get it sometimes when I do thump it or whatever you get all excited and you do do that I do it too still and you guys see on the kayak sometimes I have to overcompensate for my drift and I'm like bah. you know that's but it's always to the right shoulder or the left shoulder best I can um left hand retrieve if you're right hand retrieve but to your shoulder you know with your hand that's the best hook set on that but the main tip I can give you is, number one, do not be afraid to lose the chatterbait, all right? And I say this all the time, if you aren't losing lures, you ain't bass fishing, right? Okay? Now, I don't mean like freaking you go out there and you lose freaking five chatterbaits in an hour or whatever, you know, being an idiot. But, you know what I mean? Fish it slow and low in that grass and get it hung up. You know, and it's the same with like sticks or anything like that. Even though, really, like I said, I don't like fishing chatterbaits and sticks. But there are a lot of times, especially like beaver dams, where it's not really like crazy branches. You know, it's just like bundles of sticks and stuff. If I can get it in there and pop that sucker out, whoo, that's when you can catch some big girls. And it's the same with the grass. Do not be afraid to get that sucker stuck in there and pop that sucker out. If you have to like get it popped to get it out you know that's fine but a lot of times you know you can feel that cover coming and just yank that sucker out you'll be good um you know and there are obviously times where like the sticks thing like i say it's really not a good bait for fishing around sticks you know that's when i'll fish a spinner bait or a swim jig because those things are great around sticks but there are certain times where you can fish them around sticks you can get them caught in there and pounce them off oh my god they work a million times better than a spinnerbait or a swim jig so there's something about when it bounces up and that freaking blade goes wild oh man it just duh. and that is one of the things that I love about the chatterbait but here's the other thing too I guess I didn't mention this um, People often think, too, you have to cast past the cover. Like I was talking about the overhanging trees or something. Like, say I'm fishing a weeded area, there's an overhanging tree or something that I'm like, okay, this whole area is probably good or whatever, but that overhanging tree probably is holding a couple or something right there. There's a little lay down or a log, whatever, and I'm like, that area is it's probably holding a couple. People think you got to throw past it and reel into it which like a spinner bait that's what I like to do but and with the chatterbait I do do that as well but there's a lot of times where I will cast right in there like a jig you know cast right in there let it fall right on their head and like I said they'll spank it as it's falling like a jig out of there and then it'll get spanked so that's the thing is that you can kind of fish it like a jig too I also use it for bed fishing oh my god that pisses them off in bed fishing um, I'm getting all excited talking about chatterbaits. I'm getting all excited just talking about fishing. I need to go fishing. But, um, yeah. So, I use it for that, too. But, that's pretty much it. I mean, I guess I've kind of given you all the weird little tips and things like that. Uh, I think I pretty much said everything. I might have missed some stuff. I don't think so. That's pretty much it. Like, it's, it's complicated in a sense, but it's actually very, very, very simple. Um, you know, you just get those little things that I told you and you'll start catching them on chatter and you'll start catching some big ones. So, and the chatterbait never seems to die. Um, like I said, I've been fishing it for 10 years and 
at a lot of the same places and still catch the same fish. You know, not the same fish, but you know what I mean. Still catch good fish. And I guess not all the same places. Whatever. You get it. It never stops catching fish. Alright? Sucker. It's one of those. It's like a jig. Like, just like a flipping jig. <laughs> or even a football jig. Any jig, it just seems to always catch them. You know, other baits die off. Jig doesn't do that. And chatter baits the same way. So, uh, that's pretty much it. There you go, suckers. I hope that helps for those of you that struggle with it. And for those of you that do like them, I hope you learn something else and all that. Uh, thank you guys. Next video should be me actually fishing. So, look out for that one before winter hits. There'll still be videos in winter, of course. Trout fishing, other goofy stuff. For those of you that like the goofy stuff, I got a bunch of that stuff coming. So, but yeah, next one will be fishing. I'm going to be bass fishing until I can't no more. Alright, love you guys. See ya. Click on my logo in the upper left hand corner to subscribe. In the upper right hand corner is the last video I made. In the lower right hand corner there's a video I know you'll enjoy. And make sure to hit that like button down below as well.